Here we are. Uh, welcome to the Moodle Academy webinar entitled Moodle AI Plugins. In this webinar, we will explore the integration of AI into Moodle plugins. And uh, I am Anna Kersal from Moodle Academy, education advisor here. And I'm joined by Professor Gordon uh, Bateson of uh, Kotsu University of Technology in Japan and Marcus Green, who is a senior e-learning technical consultant at Catalyst Europe in the UK. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, thank you, Anna, for the introduction. As she mentioned, I work at Kochi University of Technology in Japan. Originally, I'm from London in the UK, uh, but I've lived here for a while. And uh, I now uh, teach English using Moodle and develop plugins. And today, uh, Marcus and I would like to talk about uh, the use of AI in Moodle. And uh, we'll uh, talk first a little bit about what AI means and discuss how Moodle plugins can use AI. And then we'll look at some examples of plugins that utilize AI, uh, starting with some simple plugins uh, and um, building towards um, some more recent plugins. And at the end, Marcus will uh, give us a preview of some of the things in uh, forthcoming Moodles that are connected with AI. So uh, first, let's begin with this important question. What does AI mean? Well, it doesn't mean this cute little monkey, which is apparently called an I, this three-toed sloth. We're not talking about him today. We're talking more about AI in, uh, in connection with computer software. Uh, we see the term AI in many marketing and advertising campaigns now. It's become a trendy synonym uh, for the word software. Uh, any kind of programming now to be sold is called AI to make it sound very clever. Uh, perhaps in more everyday English, we, we do mean some une unexpectedly intelligent software, software that appears to be as intelligent as a human. Uh, it's not always um, behind the scenes working in the same way as a human, but it, it seems like that. So it seems intelligent. But for today, we'll um, consider a more formal definition of AI, uh, given here software that firstly detects patterns in vast amounts of data, and secondly, uses those patterns as a knowledge database uh, and does something with that knowledge. That's what we'll mean by AI today. We'll also be talking specifically about generative AI. Generative meaning that it makes something, it generates something. So we'll define generative AI as software that detects patterns in vast amounts of data and uses those patterns to generate new data. So we'll uh, look at that today and consider what kind of things we can generate with generative AI. Notice that uh, generative AI is unreliable. It's not consistent. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, it successively generates the next most probable item according to all the things that it's looked at and studied in the past. It looks at a particular subset of that and guesses what the next item is going to be. And that becomes the next item that's generated. It is possible to control the randomness uh, depending on which AI engine you're talking to, there's a different term for uh, the control that um, handles the randomness. Uh, sometimes it's called temperature, and uh, a high temperature is very random, and a low temperature is much more strictly controlled. And with AI, we can tune or train the engines that we're working with. We can give them examples of what we expect and the engine will use those examples uh, as a guide when it's generating new data. Okay, so what can we generate with uh, generative AI? Um, just about anything that can be put uh, stored in a computer as data. Uh, particularly today, we'll concentrate on language, and these are AI 
uh, models that have been trained uh, by basically uh, reading the whole of the openly accessible internet and uh, using that um, to uh, build up a knowledge database of, of language. The uh, common AI engines that we uh, have heard about are ChatGPT, um, Claude, and Gemini from Google. There are, of course, others. And uh, these are uh, very open and general language models. Uh, it's also possible to train the AI engines on much um, smaller restricted data sets, uh, language sets, so that they can respond uh, more suitably in more specialized situations. We could generate images with our generative AI, and there are several well-known uh, image generation AI engines. We can uh, generate audio and video. We can translate, um, we can transcribe rather, rather speech to text, and we can generate speech from text. There are some uh, suitable AI engines given here too. And if you're a programmer, a developer, of course, J ChatGPT and other AI engines can generate computer code. And uh, so we can more or less generate anything with a generative AI engine that has been stored as data. Here you can see some AI powered tools for the classroom. There are many, many of these and they're changing all the time. Uh, these are some that I came across uh, on a Facebook group that I belong to. Um, and um, you can see uh, all different kinds of tasks, many different uh, engines listed here. And um, the one that uh, people often use is uh, called ChatGPT. I'm sure many of you have come across it. Uh, on the left here, you can see the normal web interface for ChatGPT, where you uh, give it a prompt or a request, and it replies with uh, some kind of generated response. Uh, it's also possible to interact with ChatGPT in a more programmer way uh, using something called an API. That's an advanced programming interface. And it's, it's very much like the web interface, except that instead of person to uh, browser, it's actually one program talking to another program. What you can see here is uh, how to send a prompt to chat GPT via JavaScript. And if you're a programmer, uh, you'll be able to see here that there's an important uh, fetch command at the top there. Fetch is what um, JavaScript uses to send a request via the internet to a, a website. And uh, you can see at the bottom of this screen, there's a, there's a body there where we would put the uh, prompt. And um, when, we, when we get the prompt back, uh, this is also in JavaScript. So if you're a programmer, this might help you or give you a hint about uh, how to handle a response. Um, if you're not a programmer, then it might look a bit scary. I understand that. But don't worry, we won't, we're not going to do much programming in this uh, presentation. Um, OK, so you can see that it's possible to interact with ChatGPT as a programmer. Uh, there is an iPhone app for in interacting with ChatGPT where you can just speak to it. Um, using the API, I was able to build a, a, a similar kind of um, uh, interaction where students can speak and listen to uh, answers from ChatGPT uh, using JavaScript embedded in a Moodle page. And if you're a programmer, you'll understand what I mean there. If you're not a programmer, then um, uh, you can perhaps see from looking at this page that there are some buttons for speaking, uh, sending your request, and listening to the answer. So these things are possible, and um, they can make for some interesting activities in the classroom. However, uh, we don't want to chat. We don't want to chat. We want to use AI in our plugins to, to send one, one prompt and get a single answer, a single useful answer. So that's the challenge that um, is facing many plugin developers now. Uh, the issue of what prompt to write and how to uh, 
structure the prompt is very important. And that brings us on to the idea of uh, prompt engineering, which I'm sure many of you have heard of, many of you are concerned about. And um, there are many frameworks that have been created for prompts. One that I have found to be very useful is this RTF prompt, where we give a role, we give a task, and we give a format. And um, there, there are others as uh, listed here. I won't go through them. But um, so how can Moodle plugins use AI? Well, we can use the APIs, we can use precise prompting, and we can use precise tuning. That means training the AI with examples. So giving examples, giving precise prompts, we have a much better chance of getting the output that we want. Um, here's an example of a plugin that uses uh, such a prompt. Uh, it's called Local AI Questions. And as, as it explains here, it generates a specified number of multiple choice questions in GIFT format about a given text. If you haven't heard of GIFT format before, that's a format for questions. Um, and it's um, a, a human readable format that you can import easily into the Moodle question bank. Um, if we look a little bit more closely at this plugin, uh, here's a, an admin screen where we can specify the key. That's the chat GPT key. Um, and um, this is some behind the scenes information. This is the prompt that that plugin uses. Where it's got these two curly brackets, those are placeholders which, uh, into which uh, values will be inserted later before the prompt is sent off. So uh, here we're going to insert the number of questions, we'll insert the language. And then here's the, the main prompt. It asks for gift format multiple choice questions. And in the second part of this prompt, it explains that format where it says inside the curly brackets, write an equal sign before the correct answer. And then at the end of this um, prompt, it's got a little example. Uh, it's a kind of mini tuning here to explain to the AI what a kind of uh, response is expected. There are some uh, warnings included in the prompt. And this prompt is sent behind the scenes using the API. Um, from the teacher's point of view, they, they come to a screen like this. They, they input a story into that top box, and then they press the Generate Questions button. The, gen the questions are not generated immediately because it takes a few seconds for the AI to think about this job, and it will eventually come back and produce some gift uh, like this. Um, in, in these questions were questions about a story, uh, uh, about a, a toy, uh, a small dog that was looking for socks. And um, I've put the, the questions in red here and the answers in uh, black. You can see it's done quite a good job, quite a good job. And these questions could be imported as they are into the Moodle question bank. When those questions appear in Moodle, they appear a little bit like this. So that's the kind of uh, multiple choice question that you would be happy to include in your quiz about the story. Uh, however, this uh, plugin has some limits. Limitations. Uh, it's it's a fixed prompt. You can't modify that prompt. And the questions are only comprehension questions about a story. Uh, you can't, for example, specify questions about particular words. You would have to make up those up yourself. There's also another difficulty here, and that is a single site-wide key. The API key is the same key for everybody. And um, for small sites, that's OK. Uh, um, but uh, as a teacher and uh, as a part-time teacher, I found myself in the situation where I worked part-time at another university and, and uh, I couldn't ask them to uh, upload a single, uh, admi a single key. Uh, so I wanted to upload my own key as a, as a teacher and share that. So um, that, that can be a problem, having a single site-wide key. So, um, I'll, bring, I'll talk a little bit more now about uh, another um, plugin which I have created or I'm in the process of creating. And uh, this supports the learning of vocabulary, the learning and assessment of vocabulary using uh, AI-generated language samples and language questions. 
It also has the goals of being able to specify and share prompts and uh, also share the keys. Um, there are some other goals that you might expect from um, a vocabulary study plugin. We won't talk about these today um, so much. Uh, this plugin uses a slightly more versatile prompt. Basically, it has more of these placeholders. Uh, there's a simple prompt here to uh, define the role of um, the teacher and the role of the AI engine. Then we tell the engine what we want it to do. We define the action, help me to create some questions. And you can see some more placeholders here for the number of questions, the type of questions, the vocabulary item. And finally, we define the output format that we want. All of this is uh, completely modifiable by the teacher and um, uh, we're also able to share the keys and the prompts within a context. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the idea of a context in Moodle. Um, uh, an activity has a context, a course has a context. Uh, there's also a course category context and uh, there's an all encompassing site context as well. And uh, depending on your role within the Moodle site, you can share if you want to, your keys and prompts within this context. This allows you to build up a library of prompts that are useful for you or useful for your fellow teachers. And um, you can share the keys uh, with uh, uh, whoever you like, uh, whoever you are comfortable sharing with, I should say. Yeah, this is what the um, activity looks like. Um, uh, we're going to concentrate on the AI part of this, where we're uh, defining prompts, defining formats, and uh, specifying keys for ChatGPT. When we add a prompt, we can add any prompt we like. So it's very uh, modifiable. We give the prompt a name, we add the text of the prompt, and as I mentioned, we, exp we define the, the context uh, which we can share, and the time uh, from when until when that we want to share. And um, this allows us to uh, control who has access to our keys and um, uh, thereby uh, giving you, uh, allowing you to share, but at the same time control the sharing. Uh, when we add a new format template, we do a similar kind of thing to give the name and some text, and uh, we define the way the uh, format, uh, the template can be shared, and uh, we can build up a little library of formats. If we look a bit at those a bit more closely, um, here's a format for um, a gift question, a multiple choice question. And you can see this uh, comes more or less straight off the Moodle document site, actually, where um, in the gift format, we can specify feedback, correct answers and wrong answers, also known as distractors. And we give this uh, format to the AI engine just like this, and it will be able to use this information to build um, a question. Uh, here's another format for uh, true, false, slightly simpler, but we can also add um, feedback here. And uh, there's another format for matching questions. So we can make uh, all these different kinds of questions by defining different kinds of format. It seems that in the matching format, there's no chance to add feedback. I'm not sure why or um uh, if, even if it's possible, uh, but uh, but there we are. That's something which I came across. Yeah. When we add a key, um, we as well as the the key itself and um, the sharing, we can also add more information about uh, which Chat GPT model we're talking about. We can add a training file, and we can add a, a temperature, which I explained earlier allows you to control the randomness. Okay. Once we've defined those prompts, formats, and keys, we can go and uh, start adding questions. We uh, set up uh, which uh, engine we want to use, which format we're hoping to produce, 
uh, the level of questions that we want to use. There are uh, different ways to specify the level and uh, we can specify how many questions. On this screen, you can see the question count is five. And then, as before, we set this to run as a background task. If we look at the background task, um, you'll, we see a message saying it took 10 seconds to generate the five questions for our target word. And uh, if we were at a browser, 10 seconds would be a long wait. So that's why this step is run in the background. Um, at this point, it's possible to review the uh, gift questions. You can look at them like this. This is the gift format with the question itself, the correct answer, and uh, some feedback, the incorrect answer and some feedback. And uh, if the teacher says OK at this point, then we can uh, give permission for the uh, background job to continue and import the five questions. Um, you get a little report like this to say that the questions have been generated and imported into a question category solely for recitalist. Uh, then within a quiz, we can add a random question using that question bank. Here's the question category for recitalist. There are five questions generated there. And uh, it's very easy to add uh, several of these random questions. We could use the, uh, the same word or we could use different words. And uh, then when we get to the quiz itself, the questions that we've generated are um, looking very um, professional and suitable for testing whether students know the meaning of the word recitalist. So there's a, a quick run through of, of what is possible with um, AI, how AI can be used to uh, generate questions in this way. Of course, it's possible to generate questions as a teacher, uh, but we can speed up the process and at the same time allow the, the teacher to um, monitor what's happening and approve the questions before they are imported. Okay, so I've described two uh, plugins there that, for Moodle that use AI, and I've hopefully given you some idea of what they're doing behind the background, uh, behind the scenes in the background. Uh, now I'm going to switch across to Marcus. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you, Gordon. I'll see if I can uh, share my screen with you one moment. Let me make sure that I'm on the right screen here. Meanwhile, can we uh, address Ian's question in the chat? What's the thinking behind going via the gift format rather than immediately generating the questions? Uh, well, because um, there has to be an intermediate process. Uh, um, to get those questions uh, the, from the AI engine into Moodle. The AI engine can't directly talk itself to Moodle. It's not allowed to uh, add stuff itself to the database. So it, that has to be done by the plugin. And of course, you could have you could have the plugin um, import the questions immediately behind the scenes. However, if you do that, then um, you may get uh, junk questions being added to the database. And uh, once the questions are in, it can become uh, quite difficult to find them, uh, assess them and delete them. So I felt the easiest time to make that assessment was just before they are imported. Thank you. Great. And uh, one more uh, from Deniar, uh, because he missed uh, the beginning. So where he can get the plugins, I guess it's. Um, yes, the, the uh, URL of the first plugin is um, was given earlier. You can find it on in the uh, Moodle plugins database. It's called AI uh, AI questions, I think it was. The vocabulary plugin is uh, still under development, and so that's not publicly available yet. But it will become publicly available later this year. Right. Lovely. Thank you very much. I will answer the question that will be asked about what I'm about to show. And, and that is that uh, my plugin I'm about to talk about is not available from the plugins database. It is available from GitHub and it is being extensively tested and experimented with in 
multiple universities. So uh, I'm going to wind back to Christmas Day 2023. If you can see my screen at the moment, let me just confirm that. OK, right. So, yeah. So you should be able to say so it's December the 25th, 2023. This is how I spent my Christmas. And I made available uh, for testing uh, or to demonstration an example of a Moodle free text question type that gave pre preliminary feedback um, effectively instantly from when, when a student clicked the submit button. And the thinking behind this is that teachers spend an inordinate amount of time uh, grading students' submissions or, or giving them feedback. And it would be nice if the students could have uh, relatively instant feedback. And I should emphasize when I say feedback, I inadvertently said grading there, this is all about learning. It's not about testing assessment or uh, summative assessment. This is all about learning. So the idea is, is that a teacher uh, can create a question type, a standard question type, as you would uh, essay or multiple choice. And then you fill out the forms in this question. And you can see here that the top here, it says, write a single sentence in the past tense. That's what the student sees. And then it creates, you create an AI prompt, explain if there's anything wrong with the grammar and the text, confirm it if it is in the past tense. Now, Gordon is the expert on prompting, and that's a trivial prompt. And I'm sure if Gordon was working with this, he would come up with something much longer. And then I have down there a mark scheme. Now, the mark scheme is purely so that the teacher and the student can get an idea of how they're doing. It's not to be used for summative assessment because as Gordon mentioned previously, large language models in these AI systems are inherently unreliable and you should never do anything that is um, uh, you know, critical on these systems. And I, I can't emphasize that enough, but they will try to. So that's how the question appears. Now, this is where the student uh, uh, goes to give an answer. And the question said, write a single sentence in the past tense should say write a single English sentence there. And the student re res responded with, yesterday I go PRK. And it, you've got a word count there. And you can see the comment in green at the bottom that says, the text contains grammatical errors. The correct form should be, yesterday I went to the park. And the thing that really surprised me uh, when I saw this is that it, it worked out that PRK should be park. But you have to remember that these AI tools are really a massive predictive text. Uh, they're predicting the next words. And so from their vast corpus of data, typically a sentence like that, PRK ought to be park. And you can see that I've done the prompting. This is this actually what you're seeing there is a slightly more complex prompt than I, than, than I showed you. And then I've told it to break down the grading. And it said the marks for correct grammar and spelling is nothing quite right. And using the past tense um, is nothing. Also, I'm very, very keen, and I will keep repeating this, that students should always be aware um, where these responses are coming from. And it says there, this was responded, was provided by GPT-4 uh, Turbo. So that's a bit of an old model. And you can customize. By the way, this is all free GPL code. The only cost to you is, or trouble to you, is to find your right uh, AI system. This is available on GitHub. So that's how it looks for the student. Now, Gordon and I have told you a lot of, about a lot of things this morning um, and you've heard us speak a great deal, but it's always nice if you can actually go and play with something. So if you want to make a copy of that URL there and, um, and do this right now, because I'm going to move on to another slide or if you can scan that, you can actually start playing with that thing right away, right now, without a password. So I'm going to count five and then write that down if you're interested. I should be pasting this into the chat at the moment and if anybody can uh, do so because you can play with it right away now. Okay. So I created this uh, partly because uh, I've been to the Moodle Moot Japan uh, twice. I was there and I met Gordon in person in, in February, which was, and he ta taught me a lot about uh, prompting. And one of the problems when you're uh, teaching English, particularly with uh, Japanese, which is very different to English, is how do you give students um, meaningful feedback, ideally in their own language? And what you can see on the screen there is, is that this question type, um, it looks at whatever your current language is. And typically, if you're a Japanese student, you would have your Moodle language set to Japanese and it will give the feedback in the, your preferred language. You can change that. But and. 
I thought that was excellent, uh, except it could have been anything. So I put it into um, a, a translation system, and, and you can see here that it appears to um, be a reasonable response. Okay, uh, and this is just a little animation of how it works, and you can see the here that's given the comment there, um, and you can see that the response is sort of almost instantly, a matter of two or three seconds. And one of the questions that people have given to me, they said that, um, uh, can we review the responses before the students see them? And the answer is yes, you can. That You lose something there in the sense that because this is all about learning, it's really nice if the student can get that feedback while they're think still thinking about the problem. Here's another uh, question here. It says, write a sentence politely asking someone to phone you on the following day. And somebody in, in Japan that I was talking to, an Australian, he came up with this. Will you call, call me tomorrow, will ya? And it really intrigued me that, that what it is said is grammatically correct. I'm now reading the green bit there, but it's not in formal English. The phrase will ya is informal and colloquial, which is absolutely true. And so you can see here and get against that, that didn't have the model in that, but you can see that that is a valid feedback for a student. Um, so now I've got an example of where it just doesn't make any sense at all. Phone me is calling and uh, you get no marks at all here. Um, so that that's the uh, I hope some people are actually experimenting with that right at the moment. And there's like 10 questions and there's a thing at the end where you can give us our feedback here at Catalyst. So that is something that's available now. I intend to put in the plugins database. Um, and the reason it's not in the plugins database is I, I want it to be mature and it, it works. And people, I know some people in Germany looking at it and now the country and, and Japan, but I'm a cautious person, especially with something that is so inherently, uh, you know, sort of, you, you can't rely on it giving you the same response with exactly the same prompt and that. So I want to make sure that I've fully explored it. So that's my tool, and I'm very excited by it, as I would be. But there's a lot of other interesting AI innovation going on. And this, the thing I'm showing you at the screen at the moment, this is sort of at the cutting edge. And I've only played with this particular thing in the last 24 hours. And what this will allow you to do is to uh, give a link to a video, typically on YouTube, or to this morning I gave it, it says ready there, because I gave it to a link to a very old web page that I had. And it will generate a sequence of H5P activities based on, on that content. And as a teacher, um, you, your role is, is then to look at that and refine, uh, which, which similar to the tool that Gordon mentioned, to refine the things that you think are the, are the best and um, and then present that to your students. Okay, so that's a bit, a bit of a tour of, of some other uh, plugins, but now I wanna talk about what's coming in only a few weeks, that in uh, 7th of October, Moodle 4.5 is due out, and this will come with its own built-in subsystem. So the tools that Gordon and I have been showing you, each one has sort of reinvented its own way of talking to ChatGPT, Claude, or what have you. What this does, it centralizes it. So us developers, um, I've got one single way of doing it and it also includes some management capabilities. And for me, this is a very big deal and it's going to spark a lot more development this in this area and it will facilitate more AI plugins. OK, so reporting, don't have to reinvent the wheel, permissions, all these things that um, should be centralized. So what will it look like? Well, you can if you go to GitHub and download the master branch of Google at the moment, which I did a fresh last night, you will see a new settings as a site administrator, got the arrow pointing to AI, and this allows you to manage the site-wide AI settings, and then they have this concept of providers and placements, which providers sort of means the AI system, placements is what it's going to do. And the practical benefit of this is that uh, the, the first benefit, inevitably, this is the first cut of this, so that it just wants to get a small number of things right. You have a new item in the editor called generate images and generate text. And I'm not that interested in generating images, but I am very interested in uh, generating text. So you can see here that the default providers are Azure and Open API, which are closely related, but other providers will be coming along soon. And I have seen a, a, a beta of one for Olama, which allows you to host yourself. So you can have the whole of your AI uh, inference running on your own system and by which i mean and i've done this is that you can pull the internet out of a laptop and you can type into it and it will it'll do the ai magic and which, which i have done and um 
and it's really impressive levels of, of this kind of stuff, the sort of stuff that I've shown you there. So I'm looking forward, because Moodle uh, is very focused on making things um, free and open and totally in your control, that is on their agenda. So you can see here some of the things that it will be offering is generating text, generating images, and also summarizing text. Uh, and the first thing that it does, well, there's two things. You've got course assistance, so that a little dialogue of the course for summarizing. And then you've got the editor uh, placement there, which is the screenshot I just showed. Now, I've got, I did this whilst Gordon was just talking earlier on. And as I say, this is a bad example. And uh, what I've done here is uh, on a publicly visible copy of this uh, version of, of Moodle 4.5, it's not the finished version, but it's, close to um i've pasted in shakespeare's famous sonnet to be or not to be and then i've asked it to rewrite it as a limerick limerick which is, is like a trivial and gimmicky thing to do but it does show what these ai tools can do and you can see here it's done a job of um rewriting the uh, the famous sonnet as a limerick and part of my reason for sharing this is, is that I, you know, this kind of summarizing and this kind of stuff to me is it's interesting and it's kind of how does it work? But I, I'm really interested in more practical automation. And one of the things that we only thought of yesterday with my colleagues here at, at Catalyst EU is, is that um, it's a really good tool. It could be a really good tool for generating tags for items because, as I say, because these things, they, they can be inherently unreliable. It can generate a list of tags and you'll look at it and you go, yes, 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 that's a good tag. I don't know why I did that tag. So there's a lot of other areas that I say only yesterday I thought this is a good use of this. Um, and that raises the question with a Moodle 4.5 and its subsystem and all these tools like the one that Gordon has been using, how long, how hard will it be for people to adapt their current way of doing it, which is basically everything. The analogy I don't for the for the older members of the audience, it used to be that every piece of software had to have a driver for every printer that you owned, which was not good. Um, and then long came at new operating systems, and you got the printer driver for the operating system, and everybody talked to the printer driver. So the AI subsystem is a little bit like that. So as developers, you just talk to the AI subsystem, and it manages talking to your external large language model. So because Moodle 4.5 was coming along, I thought, well, I better check out how difficult it is to uh, adapt my plugin to work with it. And... Amusingly, because AI tools are quite good at advising on programming, after a few attempts at doing this by hand, I, I poked this into one of these AI tools and it gave me some suggestions. Didn't write the code, it just gave me some suggestions. And what you can see on here is that example I've been using previously, but instead of using my own um my own sort of back end that knows how to talk to the AI, this used the Moodle one. And so inevitably I will be adapting uh, my plugin to work with the new standard way of doing these things. Okay, so I'm gonna finish on a, a few little predictions here. Uh, there's been a lot of what I call moral panic about cheating. And I was a teacher for 10 years and I'm familiar with the, the issues that you get with cheating. And I'm not worried about AI and cheating well, I'm no more worried than I was when Wikipedia came along and uh, everybody was going to cheat. Or, or the pocket cal I'm so old, I can remember the introduction of the pocket calculator and my parents' generation uh, were in a panic because nobody had ever learned to do their arithmetic anymore, but we adapted for it. I predict there's gonna be a lot more Moodle integrations and plugins, some more useful than the other and some more gimmicky. I think people are bound to overclaim what they can do. Um, but overall, I believe this is a new, useful tool that will be an overall benefit to education, teaching and learning. As a side note as well, um, people are very concerned about the cost of these things, but I believe the cost of accessing AI systems is going to plummet so that it will be a cost in the same way we have to pay for our internet connectivity. Okay, I don't, I just think the price is going to fall so very rapidly. I also believe there will be a, we are in an AI bubble where literally trillions of, of dollars are being invested in these systems, and I don't believe it's sustainable. But in the same way as there was an internet bubble, we got left with this legacy of a lot of connectivity in the internet. It will leave a, a beneficial legacy. And as I said there, the price of inference or accessing AI system will fall dramatically. 
Thank you very much. I shall uh, stop sharing my screen now and see it, what questions. I can see there's 23 posts in the questions, so I will um, see if there... I yes, can okay. we have uh, a quite active <laughs> audience. Let me scroll back up. Okay. Uh, right, Geordie, uh, there's a name I'm recognised. Uh, I think it's Bridget. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm scrolling. I'm seeing Geordie's answer. Do the questions generated by ChatGPT store information about what level the question is? That's really one for Gordon. I don't know if he's answered that, and I believe the answer is no. Can you confirm that about what level? Uh, well, actually, when the questions come into Moodle, uh, the plugin adds some tags. And, uh, for example, the tags has the, the type of question or the level of English or uh, some of the, the fact that it's an AI-generated question. So yeah. that kind of information, the meta information, is stored in tags. That's wonderful. It's, it's because... As I mentioned only like yesterday, I've been very interested in question tags since before they were useful. Um, and um, I'm very interested in that and I will be working on that. So that's a question for Gordon that he's just answered. Uh, could we just create a full quiz in one go? That's one for uh, Gordon. Uh, yes, of course, all these things are, are possible. Uh, but then uh, it's it's quite a big uh, ask for a chat GPT to generate a useful quiz. Uh, how many questions do you want? 10 questions, 100 questions. And uh, at some point, you should probably check through them yourself. We can't uh, trust the AI bots uh, to do a good job all the time. So there has to be a review built into the process, in my opinion. Yeah. And then somebody asked for the um, URL of my AI text, which Adam has helped with, and he's given that link there. Do you, okay, so do you have a limit to the level of feedback, i.e. a few sentences? Short answer is no. There will be a, um, there'll be some uh, thing in there, that, that there may be a limit to it, I, ju I just don't know. Um, but it will be, um, it's not designed to be an essay style feedback, which is something I've been working on. Um, but I don't know the answer, but the answer will be the length of the field in the database. Okay. Again, what kind of open AI do we need here? Does anyone know about the limitations of an API from a personal plus account? I don't know the answer, but I can tell you that since uh, December, just since Christmas Day, uh, my open AI costs, and it's, it's still live, has been 50 US dollars for all of the open AI I've been using. Okay. So I just want to give you an idea of that. But there is another service called Grok, where they don't have my um, they don't have my payment details at all, and that gives me fantastic inference at so far at zero price, really, really fast. Which is why I'm saying that um, the cost is not overwhelming. So fifty dollars I've US dollars I've spent so far, which you know Western incomes is some is purely out of my own pocket because I'm interested in it. Uh, yeah, and, and for me, I'm spending about uh, ten or twenty dollars a month, and uh, the payment works that uh, when you reach the, the data limit, it will uh, ask you for a top up. And uh, so right, yeah. there's, there's not really much of a limit. And yeah. uh, when it needs more money, it'll ask you for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So and it, 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 there's no fear of you suddenly becoming poor and homeless because it charges you vast sums of money. It doesn't work like that. So Eric has asked the real key question here. Thank you for that, er Erica. Sorry, Erica. Uh, would it be possible for students to use an editor button to generate answers to the questions that were themselves generated by the AI plugin? Is there any built-in protection against this variant of, quotes plagiarism? The answer is no, there isn't. Uh, there isn't any built-in protection against this. I, I'm not going to build any protection against this because People will always cheat, and that's why we need teachers, and I'm not interested in summative assessments. I'll leave that to other people. Um, so, <laughs> and the reason Adam is referencing the end of the world as we know it is because when I saw him in Japan, I had a loop of REM song, this is the end of the world as we know it, because and a lot of people get worried about this and they think that AI is the end of the world as we know it. And I think it's the end of the world of lazy assessments, really, in the sense that, um, yeah, if, if you want, there's a brilliant, brilliant way of preventing plagiarism. And it's almost 100 percent guaranteed. What you do is you get a student to submit some work, you read through the work and then you speak to the student in person and you say, could you explain this passage? Almost guaranteed to work. Right. You know, this is 100 percent. I'm willing to sell you this as a solution. There is a cost, obviously, my consultancy fee, but also you will have to pay some human beings, ideally teachers. That's the bottom line. Always has been, always will be. Okay. 
Uh, what, in what way do you imagine learner assessment will change? I think I've kind of summarized it there. I am working and looking at um, the equivalent for um, essays, um, mainly as a proof of concept, so it can handle longer passages. But again, uh, I see that as something that the teacher can look at and accept or reject. You know, in the sense that it's it's, it's to nobody ever said that they love their teacher because of their fantastic uh, marking. They tend to say they love their teacher because they were, you know, friendly, helpful, supportive and creative. OK. And yet teachers spend vast amounts of time doing tedious marking. I know I did anyway. Uh, did I? Yeah. Yeah. So that's so thank you for that question, uh, Erica. It's a really good question. Um, what about the chat GPT block? That's the chat thing. I yeah. thought it was interesting that Gordon had that headline where he said that. But we're not talking about chat. Chat's useful and interesting. Um, yeah, so I think we've answered. Uh, that I, I don't know much about the chat GPT stuff at all. Um, uh, I just, and in fact, I, I because I'm a bit of a free software zealot, I've, I've really focused on making sure that any tool I use will work with um, systems where you can be absolutely confident of the uh, data data sovereignty. In other words, if you're sending data off, um, I want to know, I'm absolutely certain of its control. I use ChatGPT because it's the market leading product. And in fact, I, I'm not particularly worried about what it you. I don't think the is going to do anything sinister, but it's not about what I think, it's what I absolutely, I, I really want to know. There's also, I'm very focused on the EU market who, who are very focused on, on this. Also, just one other thing is, is that the tools that I've built do not send any details of the student off. In other words, there's not even the student ID that gets sent off. Uh, and I think people people are worried about that and they should be worried about this. Let's have a look. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got some questions. To the question plugin, can we add the questions directly into the question bank or do we need to first export the app? Uh, if that's about my questions, I think that's probably about Gordon's questions. He can answer that. Um, but I think both Gordon's, the questions that Gordon generates and the questions that I, I generate, they are just Moodle questions. And, and you can use, as long as you, a lot, with my question type, obviously you have to have the question type and the link to the AI thing in there, um, but they, they're just standard Moodle questions. One of the sort of general... And, and sorry, sorry, Marcus. Sorry, just yeah, jump in here. Yeah, please uh, yeah. with Because uh, I think this is a little bit about mine as well. Um, my intention was that initially the teacher will be wanting to check the questions and make sure they're okay. And then once everything looks uh, to be running smoothly, then it is possible to um, uh, take out that manual check and uh, import hundreds, thousands of questions at once. Yeah, yeah. And and then I, I suspect in your system, the idea is that teachers do some quality checking on that because um, some some questions, like, like with the humans, some questions will be better than others. You, yes. you, you will have some duplication of content there. So you, you want to uh, you know, remove the, the, the duplication. And also, these models are getting better all the time and not just the commercial ones. The um, I used to use a system called Grok Cloud, and that uses the Meta um, Llama 70B. And the, the difference in quality between that and the commercial stuff is, is vanishingly small. Right. Let me have a look. We've got another thing that's come up here. Uh, we also have a hand raised by Juan. Juan, would you like to uh, ask your question? Yeah, yeah. I think I think he's. Sorry, I'm mistaking a thumbs up from it to for a. Uh, you need to unmute yourself. Can yes. you unmute yourself, Juan? Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, I'm sorry. Good morning, and thank you very much. It was a very interesting presentation. Good. I wanted. To, uh, I have a, a couple of things. The question is. Like, have you thought of a kind of assistant that will not provide answers or not react to the to the content, but provide hints or provide a kind of other new questions so that the student could find the answer by himself, like not just uh, limit to giving an answer. And secondly, I have been developing uh, by myself. Uh, I work at uh, Wide Services, which is a Moodle partner in, in Greece, uh, Cyprus, and, and, and Albania. And I have been developing a kind of, um, how would I say, a prototype, which looks very much like the Moodle question AI system, which does something like the same in different way, but very similar. But uh, is there a way we can contribute like 
instead of working on my corner, like participate or, or provide input or my ideas to, to Graham, your project or something like that? Well, in, in full humbleness, yeah. Yeah, I've I've collaborated with just I've had code contributions from a Justin Hunt who produces Poodle, which is an amazing language. It's a commercial product. It's really amazing, and he's contributed code to me. There's the yeah. there, there is a uh, Mebis LP who are the Bavarian uh, school system, and they've contributed code to me, and they forked mine to work with their system. So I see there's a lot of lot of um, possibility of collaborating and improving these tools because it's all new to everybody. This is, you know, I, yeah. I'm giving this presentation, but I, as I showed, it was on, it's only on Christmas Day that I showed a video. I didn't even show code, and I didn't get my account on ChatGPT until December. So yet, yeah, so yes, let, let's all collaborate on this. We are we are stronger yeah. together. And I have something to add as well, there, Marcus and uh, Juan. Maybe uh, this kind of AI assistance that you're talking about uh, is. Um, formative feedback where the students are, sim are not simply told whether something is right or wrong, but hopefully they've been giving some clue as to how they can get to the right answer. And yeah. actually, this is something that I've struggled with uh, the AI engines so far. They're very good at saying what's right and what's wrong, but they're not so good at these uh, kind of gentle nudging feedback. And that's something yeah. that I'm working with at the moment with my training file so that I can ask either for sometimes you want the uh, yes, no summative feedback, but other times um, you want this formative feedback in the form of uh, hints and nudges. <clears throat> Yeah. I, and I think this is the I put in the comments while Gordon was talking that prompting is key to success in all of this in that and, and it's not my skill. I, I had very, very minor. And and Gordon, Gordon's, I learned from Gordon's presentations about those slightly like, concepts and structures for it. And it's a very flexible thing as well, in the sense that as it, if you move from one AI engine to another, you, you can get different response from the same prompt. So it needs to be more organized. And I have an idea. Uh, I think it'd be really nice if somebody produced or Core Moodle produced some kind of prompt sharing capability rather than us, everybody constantly coming up with, it, with their own prompts. Right. That is handled to a certain extent by my um, uh, vocabulary plugin. So uh, I, I hope that idea, n not necessarily my code, but that idea can be uh, imported into Moodle and yeah. uh, used so we can share stuff. Yeah. I, I think I think everybody should be extremely cautious about these technologies because they will be wildly oversold as, you know, sort of, um, you know, um, replacing teachers. And, and, you know, we've all seen the nonsense YouTube adverts. But just because something is oversold, just like at the dawn of, of the World Wide Web and e-commerce, doesn't mean to say it's going to be useful. But everybody should constantly. I, I finished one of my presentations with that thing where it says, call me tomorrow. And, and it's a screenshot. And I haven't done it this time. And the student answers, wibble. OK, just a nonsense word and they get full marks. OK, that's my code. Send it off. They put in nonsense. They get full marks. And as I've tried to emphasize here, I need to improve the prompt for that. But that doesn't trouble me because this is all about formative and not summative assessment. I want to get rid of that. And also, I think it was Alex McCash, I think he pointed out you can do a thing called uh, prompt injection or prompt poisoning, where a student could put in a very carefully crafted uh, response that would get them full marks for everything. OK, so, you know, th this is possible. Uh, and I've, I've worked on defending against that. But that for me, that's, you know, the Years ago, they used to cheat by asking a friend or passing a note. This is just human stuff. And I'm all about teaching and learning. And I will leave the uh, summative assessment to other people to worry about. I know it's strange for a teacher to be interested in teaching and learning, but perhaps it's just me. Juan, he's put his hand up again. Mar Go Marcus, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. sorry. Just, Juan, I'm just... a bit worried about the time. Can we check yes. with Jana about the time? Okay. <laughs> Yes, uh, I, I was, uh, well, I will definitely uh, allow uh, once uh, if uh, people want to departure, uh, we are on the time. Uh, we are about closing the session and the whole recording will be shared with you afterwards. So Juan, please go on and we will wrap up right after. 
Thank you so much. And uh, just um, to comment that uh, the plugin that I generated, what I do, I do is I send one prompt that asks JGPT to provide me with five appropriate prompts that then I can select with checkboxes. They go back to ChatGPT, and then I get very good answers because it's ChatGPT itself, which is providing the prompt. So there is a generating prompt, which has a text with placeholders. And then this is the way I have managed to, to get very good uh, responses in order to then integrate. Uh, I will use icon format questions to a question bank. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks for sharing Thank that, Juan. That's a useful technique. Really useful. Okay. Uh, well, I think it's about time to to start wrapping up. I've shared in uh, the chat the link to the Moodle Research Lab where a lot of uh, AI discussions uh, are made. It's in the Moodle.org site. So, uh, you can always keep up uh, with this uh, kind of uh, discussion and topics. And just let me share my screen so we can uh, finish. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this session and uh, we would love you to consider getting involved further and help us grow by continuing to the development of Moodle Academy. So you can uh, do this by visiting our Get Involved course, which you will find on the front page of Moodle Academy site. You can suggest ideas uh, for new webinars and courses, and you can vote on ideas that have been already uh, suggested. Of course, we are always uh, look out for community members to help us present uh, webinars and co-create uh, short online courses. Um, and we would love uh, your help making Moodle Academy more inclusive. So if you're able to please jump into our Translate Moodle Academy course and get started uh, with helping us translate our courses and webinars into other languages. Of course, uh, Please help spread the word about Moodle Academy by telling your colleagues about the course we offer and the events we run. When you complete a course, you will earn a badge and educators might be interesting uh, about getting involved with uh, the Moodle Educator Certificate and you can take the uh, Are You Ready for the MSc quiz? And one of our certified service providers will support you through the certification process. Uh, and that's all. See you into the next uh, webinar in Moodle Academy. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. See you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.